Ukraine's army has launched an aggressive military operation to retake the town of Slovyansk. Ukraine's interior ministry says up to five pro-Russia activists have been killed as the government tries to regain control of several towns along the border with Russia. Violence broke out as Ukraine's military seized a checkpoint just outside Slovyansk. The town is a military stronghold for the pro-Russian movement. It lies just 160 kilometers from the Russian border. Separatist fighters have controlled the city for nearly two weeks. Gunmen have also seized government buildings in these towns close to Slovyansk. One of the main flashpoints has been Donetsk, where separatists have declared self-rule. In the city, activists have been stockpiling weapons and fortifying their defences. Buildings have also fallen to protesters in several pockets of the region. Well, we've got two correspondents on standby covering this story. In a moment, we'll go to Peter Sharp in Moscow. First, though, let's cross to Barnaby Phillips, who's just outside Slovyansk in eastern Ukraine. And uh, Barnaby, you're near that new army checkpoint near Slovyansk. What's the latest on the military operation? I think you can see behind me where the Ukrainian army have been setting up their positions on the road into Slovyansk, uh, checking vehicles that go past for weapons and so on. The latest we're hearing from the town itself is that things have calmed down. There are reports that the Ukrainian army moved forward this morning, took one or two or maybe three checkpoints which had been set up by pro-Russian armed groups over the last few days. Uh, there were firefights uh, and the Ukrainians are saying uh, that up to five people died on the other side, not on the army side. Uh, but we're also hearing that they subsequently moved back uh, and we've heard from reporters that Russian groups have re-established uh, positions. So, in some ways, it seems as if it did not escalate. There was a certain amount of jousting, um, you know, moving for position, uh, but things did not uh, blow up fully, if you like, in the town and around the town. And Barnaby, I know that earlier you were at the funeral of the murdered Ukrainian politician who was found near Slovyansk. And the disturbing thing about that was that he was reported to have been tortured. Yes, uh, the Ukrainian authorities say that his body had been horribly mutilated uh, and he had been taken away, presumably by uh, armed pro-Russian groups uh, several days ago, uh, and his corpse was discovered in a river. Um, so what we think was that he had been tortured and then subsequently murdered. And as you can imagine, under these circumstances, uh, tragic and violent uh, and in an atmosphere full of fear and suspicion, uh, the funeral was a very charged affair. Of course, uh, his family, uh, Vladimir Rybok's family, were extremely upset, uh, but it was also, and I suppose that's symptomatic, something of a political affair. People were flying the Ukrainian flag, they were singing the Ukrainian national anthem, and they were firing guns into the air. Yeah, just one of uh, several flashpoint events happening over there. Barnaby, thanks very much indeed for that. Barnaby Phillips. Uh, near Slovyansk. And Russia says the first step to resolving the crisis has to be taken by Kiev. Speaking in Moscow, Sergei Lavrov called on the Ukrainian government to end its military operation. In essence, they were called terrorists and therefore a counter-terrorist operation took place with the army against the civilian population. What is taking place in Mariupol is an irresponsible policy, which I'd like to repeat is based on ultra-nationalistic and extremist and neo-Nazi ideas. Well, Peter Sharp is in Moscow. And Peter, I think what's clear is that we're seeing a sharp ramping up of rhetoric on both sides, aren't we? But what, how is Russia responding to the military operation? Well, the Kremlin's been monitoring, obviously, developments in southeastern Ukraine closely throughout the day and uh, briefed President Putin, who is uh, on a speaking engagement in St. Petersburg. Uh, and Putin was pretty strongly worded statement from him saying that um, if the Kiev authorities have used the army to, as he put it, against pro-Russian activists, then there will be consequences. Basically repeating uh, the message that uh, Sergei Lavrov had made uh, the day before. Russian people being attacked is an attack on the Russian Federation. But there's been a new development in the last half hour. We've learned that uh, from the defense minister, Sergei Shoigu, uh, he said that a new military exercise is now underway in the south and western parts 
uh, of, uh, of Russia near the Ukraine border. He said this is it in response to uh, NATO's uh, partial mobilization, bringing in American troops into Poland, and also, more directly, uh, the buildup of Ukrainian troops. He's been pretty specific on intelligence of what the Ukrainians have got. Let me go through it. 160 tanks, 230 armored vehicles, uh, several air force units, um, and, uh, and artillery uh, are involved in what he says is a large-scale Ukrainian deployment in the southeast of the country. So, really, this crisis just seems to escalate day by day. Only yesterday there was another military exercise being held near Rostov. So, the time for talking, it appears, is, is fading, um, and we're now seeing this escalation on a military front. Yeah, disturbing stuff. Peter, thank you very much indeed for that. Peter Sharp in Moscow there.